Hello, and welcome to Forgeborn Hobbies. In this video, I'm going to show you how I painted my Gene Steeler Colts gang for Warhammer 40,000 Necromunda. A YouTuber I really enjoy, Midwinter Minis, recently released a couple of videos talking about Necromunda, the Gang Warfare Skirmish Miniatures game set in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. If you haven't watched those videos, I'll link to them in the video description because they're really good and you should go watch them. Despite the fact that I would never played Necromunda in my early days in the hobby, Guy's videos were really weirdly inspiring for me. And when some friends of mine also said that they wanted to get into this game, I knew I had to put a gang together. For those unfamiliar with Necromunda, it's played very differently to full-sized games of Warhammer 40k. Instead of vast armies with massive war machines fighting on a wide open field or throughout a ruined city, Necromunda puts you as the leader of a gang of underhivers in the massive industrial hive city of, well, Necromunda. You use a small number of fighters moving through cramped hallways and factory spaces to acquire goods, capture territory, or just have a good scrap with a rival gang. Necromunda gangs are made up of around 10 to 15 fighters drawn from specific factions, usually called a house. There are several factions that are specific to Necromunda, such as House Orlok or House Goliath, and then there are some 40k crossover factions, like the Gene Stealer Colts. I decided to go with the Gene Stealer Colts, as I thought they would be a more interesting painting challenge, and I could use them in games of Kill Team as well, which felt like really good value. I'll probably never build an entire Gene Stealer Colts army, but the models are really cool, and at the skirmish scale, collecting them is much more manageable. And while deciding how to paint this gang, I happened to see Dana Howell's videos on her cyberpunk-style Necron from the Indominus box set. In that video, she used fluorescent inks and some clever airbrushing to make her models look like they were fighting in a rain-soaked street surrounded by neon lights. I thought that was so cool. I started exploring more cyberpunk art and decided to paint my gang in that style. Bright lights, plenty of visual contrast, and an overall intense, futuristic vibe sounded pretty cool to me. So here's how I did it. First off, I read up on the rules for Necromunda, which I've never played, and learned how to build a gang. Then picked up a squad of neophyte hybrids to use as my starting gang members. I built a leader, a heavy, a grenade launcher, and some regular guys with auto guns and shotguns. All of this just according to the standard box instructions. I didn't want to do any conversions on this because I wanted the focus to be on the paint scheme more than the sculpts themselves. I left the heads off and glued them to a wire rack I made for this purpose so that I could more easily paint things later on. In planning this scheme, it's important to note some key elements of the cyberpunk style. I looked up a few images using keywords like cyberpunk or cyberpunk soldier, things like that. The common elements of this style seem to be high contrast, stark bright colors, and use of ambient overlapping lighting that looks haphazard and unorganized. Highlights need to be stark and catch just the edges of things wherever possible to sell that the light source is very intense and coming from only one direction. Interestingly, despite this, there is a very diverse array of colors hidden in the shadows of the bright lights, which means that painting the entire model black and just using object source lighting would look pretty weird. With that research in mind, and at least 12% of a plan, I got started. The main bodies of these models were primed with Vallejo Surface Primer Black, and the heads were primed with Steinol Res White Primer, both through an airbrush. From there, painting the majority of the model was pretty straightforward, using the darkest shade of the colors I wanted in the scheme. So Incubi Darkness for the floor panels on the base, Corvus Black for the armor, Rhinox Hide for the leather, Nagaroth Knight for the cloth, the Fang for the chitin on the arms and hands, Pallid Witch Flesh for the skin, and Iron Warrior for the metal. Then everything, including the skin, was given a wash of Nuln Oil. 
and the skin was given another wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. I also used some very watered down Rhinox Hide on select parts of the base to represent rust and grime buildup. When all that was dry, I went back with the base colors to use as a layer before using a lighter version of each as a very sharp highlight. I used Cobalite Green on the floor, Rust Gray and Fenrisian Gray on the black and the chitin, Xerius Purple on the cloth, Mournfang Brown on the leather, and Iron Breaker on the metal and some parts of the base to show where the paint had chipped. Lastly, I very lightly dry brushed Ulthuan Gray over the areas I wanted to catch the glowing lights in the next step. So far, except for this Ulth 1 gray dry brush, it's a pretty standard paint job and I could have just left it there, but I wanted to really make the cyberpunk style really pop on these models. So I had to take them another step further and bust out something that I have really never used before. The models were first given a coat of Vallejo satin varnish to seal everything in and hopefully protect the models from being completely ruined when I went through with the inks later. The next day, when the varnish had dried and cured, which is something I only just learned is something you need to do with varnish before you paint over it, I went to town with the airbrush. I used four different inks through my airbrush, alternating back and forth between titanium white and three other colors, transparent raw sienna, fluorescent blue, and fluorescent pink. The best way to describe this process is to start with the weakest light source which in this case was the yellow coming from the, the flooring, and to spray that on, and then to go back to white to base coat the next area, which in this case is where the blue would go, and then finally do the same for the pink, which is the strongest light that I wanted on the model. Weirdly, the transparent raw sienna was actually a better yellow light than the yellow ink I have. The fluorescent blue, was really not that fluorescent and the pink was very fluorescent and I'm really glad I picked that on the lights around the head because that's the area that I wanted to draw the most attention to. So that ended up being a really nice surprise for me. The inks, after they were all dry, they were sealed with more satin varnish to lock them in then I glued the heads on and then basically cleaned up the entire model the way that I painted it previously. Just going back over and repainting over the areas, I got a little too crazy with the inks on. This took a little while, but it tends to go pretty quick because I already know where the colors are supposed to go. And then the last thing to do here is to paint the base rooms with pure black, in my case, using Abaddon Black. Give the models a few coats of Vallejo matte varnish to seal it all in and tie all the, the textures together and we're done. So there you have it, some Gene Steeler Colt Gangers for Necromunda painted to look like cyberpunk soldiers in the grim dark universe of the 41st millennium. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful in some way. If you liked it, please hit the like button and if you want to stay up to date with future videos, make sure you subscribe. If you know anyone who might benefit from this video, please share it with them and help get the word out. I do these videos for free right now, so any exposure I can get would be really great. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Have a great day, stay safe, and keep painting.